Welcome to episode seven of the Big Data MBA educational video series. In this episode, we're going to talk about how not only millennials should view the world of data science, but how anybody who is looking to advance their career should look to um, embrace the world of data science. I've had the fortunate opportunity the last few weeks to work with a number of um, these startup hackathon sort of endeavors. And a lot of young people bringing lots of socially relevant ideas to bear, thinking about how they take it to market. And almost every one of them miss having a data or an analytic insights component to their strategy. So whether you're a, a millennial starting a company or you're somebody who's gotten laid off who's starting your own consulting company or you're bouncing somewhere else, it's really important now that you take the opportunity to understand where and how data science can have an impact in your life. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna summarize it in four key components here. Um, and again, this is a message I deliver when I teach at the University of San Francisco and at the uh, University of, Northern, of, of, um, of Ireland, National University of Ireland in Galway, but it pertains to everybody. And it starts off first by understanding that data science is a team sport. What I mean by that is that it isn't just data scientists, it's a combination of data scientists, data engineers, ML engineers on the technology side, and on the business side. You need to bring in the subject matter experts. You need to involve them into this process. This is all about collaboration, ideation, and, and coming up with the the ideas around which you want to drive success. This is also really a key part of, of embracing a lot of design thinking, um, empowerment techniques, organizational improv techniques. So you can move teams around and morph them as you need them. But first realize that data science is a team sport. And no matter what industry you're in, you need to play a part of that. And you'll play a role. You may be a data scientist, maybe a data engineer, you may be uh, a subject matter expert, but whatever you are, play that role and play it well. The second aspect is how do you get everybody to think like a data scientist? How do you teach people to, to embrace and master the ability to explore and discover and test and try and fail and learn and test and try again? That natural curiosity that drives any successful innovative organization and enterprise has to embrace this thinking like a data scientist process. It has to be a situation where all ideas are worthy of consideration, which by the way, doesn't mean all ideas are good. It just means that you need to be willing to take ideas and perspective from a wide, diverse set of, of people and look at those and try to figure out how do I blend them together? How do I bend them so that I come up with better ideas? Because remember, as an organization, if you don't have enough might moments of things that might work, you'll never have any breakthrough moments. The third aspect here is a hypothesis development canvas, and this is your friend. This is the linkage point between the business subject matter experts and the data science team. This is where it all comes together. This is where you clearly articulate the problem you're going after. You identify the metrics and the KPIs against which you're gonna measure success and progress. You identify the stakeholders who either impact or are impacted by this. You understand the decisions. You know how important that is from a previous episode. You really go through a process to identify, validate value and prioritize the decisions. Understand what predictions you're trying to make, what data sources you might need, right? You, you think about what are the value statements? What are the impediments to success? You do all of this work all this hypothesis development work before you ever put science to the data. It is the linchpin. And by the way, one of the more important aspects of the hypothesis development canvas that we're learning about more and more, especially as we're trying to um, uh, you know, mitigate the impact of bias on our AI models, is you need to have a process for understanding the costs of false positives and false negatives and building in a feedback loop that allows your AI models to continuously learn from both the false positives and the false negatives. If you don't do that, your AI models will be biased. I'm writing a blog and that will do a whole separate session on AI bias and the cost of false positives and false negatives. The final part is while you may never code or write a neural network yourself or a supervised machine learning or a reinforcement learning routine, everybody should understand how these things work and what you can do with them. You need to understand where and how you can apply advanced analytics to really derive and drive new sources of customer product and operational value. I like to think about analytics from a three level perspective. Level number one, the foundation I'm gonna call just predictive analytics. That is the ability to uncover insights, propensities, tendencies, behaviors, relationships, and codify them that are buried in the data. 
to be able to predict what people are likely to do, what actions are likely to take, what, what machines are likely to break down, to what uh, inventory you're likely to need, right? That base foundation is all built around some, some predictive analytics. And I'm gonna throw in there things like statistics and clustering and classification and regression analysis. Again, you don't need to write a regression analysis model, but by golly, you better know how one works and what you can do with it. The second level is around getting more prescriptive. That is to actually leverage prescriptive analytics to start driving and optimizing decision-making. Yeah, my favorite topic, decision-making. Here, we're gonna use lots of supervised and unsupervised machine learning to help us figure out what actions we should take. And finally, the top level, this is the level of, I'm gonna call it autonomous analytics. These are the analytics that are continuously learning and adapting. If you think about that second level of machine learning, helping to make, to make recommendations, you better have a process for measuring how effective those recommendations are. So you can feed those back into your AI models and your reinforcement learning models and your deep learning models. So they've been constantly getting better and more relevant. So again, it isn't you're ever gonna need to write a neural network or a reinforcement learning program, but you should understand the three levels, how they build on each other and how we ultimately wanna to get to a level where we've created this feedback loop so that the analytics are continuously learning and adapting. So again, the final statement here, no matter what career you're gonna go into, whether you do startups, whether you're an existing worker, whether you're going off and you're on a consulting perspective, and by the way, no matter what industry you're in, whether you're a profit or nonprofit, retail, CPG, manufacturing, healthcare, entertainment, transportation, right? Whatever industry you might be in or working or targeting to go in, you need to understand how to think like a data scientist, how to work as a team. You need to master the high possible development canvas and you certainly need to spend more time understanding where and how I can apply analytics to derive and derive new sources of customer product and operational value. Thanks for listening. This is the end of episode seven. <laughs>